from the beginning. I come in, I turn on my main disconnect if it's not on, I turn on my power. I know I have power to the machine when this light comes on. Okay? That light doesn't come on and I turn that on, it could either be one of the a fuse in here, or it could be my main disconnect's not on or I've blown a fuse over there. This at least tells you I got power. Okay? E stop. It is a push and cancel type E stop. So it stays down when I push on it, doesn't trip back out. When I hit my E stop, everything shuts off. Right then. Hydraulics, coolant, blade, it kills everything. As you see though, I still have power to my main box. So it doesn't kill the power coming in. It only kills the power to the operational functions of the machine. Okay? Obviously, if you're ever in doubt about what's going on and you're or someone's where they shouldn't be or whatever, hit your e stop. Okay? When you pull it out, you'll get a test. It'll zippity doo da, and there you go. Okay? Does that every day. And this little thing here is your calm light. And basically, that's just saying that the control is communicating with the rest of the machine like it should be. Okay. okay. If that is solid, not moving, chances are we got a problem. Okay. And that's just telling us we've got power to the control which obviously you know, but this screen does blank out after a certain amount of time. Yeah, it'll go... It'll Just go. like your laptop or whatever else. And then all you got to do is touch it, and it'll come back on. All right. E-stop. Power on. Saw frame up and down. Front vise. Open, close. Rear vise. Open, close. Close. That rear vise is also called your shuttle vise or your moving vise. This one we will always call our fixed or front vise. Um, and that just, you know, depending upon who you're talking to at the office, they may use some different terminology, but that's really what it is, okay? And this moves my shuttle vise forward or back. This controls my blade speed. Okay. And these two valves here are just that, they are hydraulic valves. This top one controls the pressure, how much pressure the blade is exerting against the material. All right, turn my hydraulics on, turn my hydraulics off. Mm -hmm. Start my blade, stop my blade. Turn my light on. Okay. This puts me in manual or automatic. This little thing is my blade saver. What that does is after I make my cut, before the saw frame moves up, the material in the back, the front vise opens a little, material moves back, closes, then the saw frame goes up. Okay? That's to keep me from rubbing on my part as I'm going up. Bimetal, not so crucial. Carbide, if you were ever running carbide, very critical because of the way that they weld that carbide or raise that carbide onto the blade itself. It's only on the back side. So if you're pulling right against that, it, it can pop a tooth out. And that'll then destroy your blade. And if you just spent $200 on a blade, you don't want it. Yeah. So that's why that's super critical. Again, if you don't use carbide, you'll probably never use it. Okay. Um, this is bundle cut or single cut mode. Um, it just changes the cycle. And then as we're running it, you'll see the cycle, and I'll tell you what the differences are. Pull it on and off. And that's slow or fast feed, okay? Under normal operating conditions, the machine has two speeds for the shuttle. When it first starts up, it's slow, and then it picks up speed, 
when it gets to the end of the length that it's going to, again, it slows down so that it can get this. That's part of that is so that it can actually be accurate. You don't want to run it at you know 100 inches a minute and then stop on there. Okay. Okay. But when we come forward, you're going to see right before it gets to the very end here, you'll hear a little difference in the noise. Yeah. You know, is it a huge difference? No, but it's just a little. And you can kind of hear that. Okay, and what that is, is you actually have another valve down there. You have a clean valve that opens up and is dumping off some of the pressure from the volume so that it slows down. Okay? Now, this, that's rapid. Now, if I go into snail mode, it runs slow the whole time. Okay? So if I'm actually looking at my screen and I want to get to a certain length, I can get to it and there I am. Okay? Now this number you see here is a kerf compensated number. Okay. Okay? So that's not actually, if I were to make a piece right now from the, the if the, it was right on the very edge to the blade, it's not actually that distance. It's about yeah, it's 70 thousand shorter than that okay. when you cut. Okay? So, but if I was supposed to be cutting a, a five inch part and I look at my screen and it says four inches, I know something's not right. So I can stop my machine maybe before I scrap a part. And sometimes it's just the part slipped or I've got something blocking something back here that I shouldn't have back here or, or whatever. Okay? Alright. Now, if I'm in creep mode here, when I'm actually running the machine, and this is where it'll happen, is I just set something up when I was in creep mode, and then I go ahead and start up in automatic. When I look back over here and I see that it's creeping along as it's going back to get my next grip, usually it's because I've left it in creep mode. Once it's in creep mode, it's in creep mode. So even when it's supposed to be rapid, it'll be snailing along. So, and that's really why I kind of make a big deal out of that. All right. This is telling me my saw frame is all the way up. When I come all the way down, I'll get that light here, and that'll come on saying, hey, I'm all the way down. Okay? My vices. When I clamp my vice, when it is completely clamped, that will come on. Your vices must be clamped before you can start your blade, even in manual. That is safety, so that you're holding on your part it won't start otherwise. Okay? And what can happen sometimes um, in the winter, it's cooler out here. The fluid, you just start the machine up, the fluid is not as liquidy, it's a little more gooey, thick, until it warms up. What may happen is you may close it and kind of nothing will happen. Just let go and push it again and it'll flow. Again, it's all about flow, and then that'll sometimes we're just doing that will make it work. Sometimes okay. it shows me I'm all the way forward. Um, why that's important is, you'll see right here that it's showing that I'm at zero length, and that light comes on. Actually, what happens is the control is set up so when it comes forward, it reserves itself every time. So it says, I'm at zero again, okay, go back this distance. And that's one way we try to make it more accurate. Okay? Because it knows where zero is all the time. So then it's, it's counting after that. It helps it become more accurate versus. Okay. Next is next. On this page is basically an informational page. It shows you where you are. It will show you your blade speed. If you have a deviation detector, which you don't, it will show you your deviation. If you have the amp meter on the machine, and on this one, I don't know whether it's on there or not, I don't think it is, it actually shows you your amp pull, so you can see what your, how much more I can push this if I wanted to. Uh, step one tells me what job I'm on. I'm on job number one if I'm running it automatic. And then here, if I'm running multiple jobs, it'll tell me that a job that I'm on and then it will show me what part number I'm on, okay? 
Now one thing with this control, it counts every cut. So if I want to make 10 pieces and I'm going to do a trim cut, I have to put 11 in the control. Otherwise it will be one short. Do you have to trim cut? No, if the front of your part is good, and we'll show you how you kind of get around that. But again, some of that is all been depending upon how accurate you want it to be. We like to trim cut because um, some of the ends of the bars and things like that, you know, they come in from you know, a steel supplier, they might be, they're not square or... Yeah, and usually though, you know, if you've got a, uh, a 10 foot bar, you might be plus or minus a quarter on that, so they could be... Okay, this is uh, a page that's going to show me the Chinglish, Crook's enactment. That's my deviation detector. Crook's meaning crooked, <laughs> enactment meaning functioning or on. So if I had a deviation detector, I, I could put a top and a lower limit. You don't have one, you will never use it. Cut piece reset, deviation detector on or off. You don't have deviation detector, so it doesn't matter. Blade life reset or all reset. Cut piece reset. What I do is I press and I hold, and you'll see it flashing. And once it starts flashing, that means it's done its job. Blade life timer right now is at 16.6 hours. If I just do that, nothing. And now I'm in my programming pages, okay? Zero is where you just are, I'm just going to be cutting one job. And I can do that on any of them. Just cut one job. No big deal where I'm at. But if I want to start running automatic programs, start at job one. Don't start at job zero. Oh, you mean like if you had something that comes back all the time? Well, not even that. <coughs> Let's say that I've got that, um, what is that, like... Um, Three inch round aluminum. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah, close enough. I got that length four inches that I want to cut. But I also got some two inches I want to cut. So I can actually set this up. So I'll run four inches for ten of them, and then two inches I want to run five of them. Oh, okay. So, so you I can, can run the same job, the same bar. I can run multiple jobs. Oh, okay. So if I'm going to cut one job by one bar. Zero, and if I'm gonna say one bar, but I'm gonna cut five different lengths out of one bar, then it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, this is my cut reset also, and you'll remember we got earlier we had I think 90 or whatever there, and you see it's now zero, and that's because again, push and hold, it'll flash, let it flash a couple times, you'll see it change. Okay. But as far as entering a job, as John showed you earlier, you just touch it, and you can see you can put up to 99, 999.999 inches. Okay. But let's say 5.250. Oh, enter. I want 10. Oop, I didn't really want 10, I only wanted 5. You know, again, it's it's yeah, just pretty simple, straightforward. I and mean, if I wanted to again run multiple jobs, I could do the next one. 7, 2. But I would recommend you run that jobs 1 and 2 versus 0 and 1. 1, enter. 2, enter. It'll do it. Oh, I got you. Now, can you say I wanted to run 1, 3, 24, or does it have to be subsequent numbers? It's, well, what it'll do, as far, again, as far as I understand it, and we, we can try it and see yeah. what it'll do, um, when it sees a zero, it stops, just like the old control. But, like, if I did 1, and then I did 25, 
Okay, it should run that, but what's going to happen is whenever it sees a zero, it's going to stop. So it's, otherwise, you'd be running 25 jobs. So, but if you have data in number 26, it's not going to run 26. Right. So it actually gives you a limit when to stop. Right. And then you have these, I can go to 5, and you can see we're at 23, 10. You can run jobs wherever you want. It will run me back up. Obviously, home at any time will put me back to home. Program gets me to the program page. Material. Okay, right now, this is the page that will do you, as a customer in the United States, absolutely no good. Yeah, that looks all like uh, some kind of European or metric kind of material, something. Japanese industrial standard. So, um, eventually this will probably be changed. And if that change happens, then probably what will happen, because this is just a database, that's all it is, just to give you an idea. Um, that means that someone in our office is going to have to go in and put all the ANSI numbers and everything in. A representation of your inputs and outputs on your PLC. Um, what they mean, I have no clue. That's why we have a service department, and they should hopefully be able to say you should have these lights on, these lights off, or they may have you just look at the PLC because the input and outputs are different than on here, but you can actually see it there, okay? Um, now, if you get an error message, it will be scrolling along this bottom here on this yellow. You must clear the error message or the machine won't start. Because it sees the error message and it locks it in. Probably the same thing over there. If you get an error message, you got to hit reset or something. To... So here it's, you just press on the yellow bar if there's one there, and it'll dimple down like you're touching it, and it'll clear it out, and then you're boom, you're good to go. Okay. No material. So if you run your bar out, no material is considered an error. Okay. So you'll see on here no material. Just push on it, clears it up. Okay? Error. These are all the errors that have taken place so far. And it gives us the time and everything. So, the next error that comes in will go on in the top and move everything down. You cannot clear this out, so you're going to eventually, there's a buffer that I think once it gets to the buffer, it starts dropping them off. So, you know, this whole page, however many line up on a page, that's how many errors will be there. Um, our old control only showed you five at a time. Five is more than enough usually. So that's what that is. Okay. And now the magical system key. Press system and then you press in the following password. These things are links and they, and the, in the background everything is metric. Okay? Because basically the rest of the world is metric. So everything that's done on the inch side is a conversion to the metric that's happening in the background. That's, that's like all those machines. Right. So feed slow length. So that's that length. Remember, so that's that. So that's all the function. Do you have any <coughs> questions? Probably a lot, but we're going to run some parts here, so that'll make.